just when you thought you've seen it all, check this out, a countertop dishwasher. Welcome back to another Jeff Reviews for you. And as you saw in this video, we are looking at a countertop dishwasher. I've been wanting to look at one of these for such a long time. I think they're great for apartments or RVs, van life, that kind of thing. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get right into this review. Here's our Blitz Home Portable Apartment Size Dishwasher. Let's do a quick measurement. It measures 16 inches across. It is 16 inches deep and 18 inches tall. Let's open this up and take a look at what's inside. All right, so first thing we see is our roller basket, and that is pretty nice. This is what's gonna hold most of our things. It looks like we have an upper rack. Inside here, there's some sort of a basket. We'll put that to the side for now. And in that basket was our tubes, both our water line and our drain line. Additionally, they include some sort of a pitcher. And then I have a spot to put silverware. The directions tell us that there are three ways to hook this up. You can hard line it in right to your water line. You could hook it up to your faucet or you could hook it to like a garden hose. I'm gonna end up doing the garden hose one because that's the attachment that you get. If you wanna do the other attachments, you're actually gonna to have to buy additional pieces. Around the entire door, they have this rubber gasket to make it a watertight seal. But most importantly on both sides, they actually have a magnet. So when you go and close the door, it brings it in tight. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the water line and the drain line. The water line gets hooked up right here, but you have to remove this rubber stopper or rubber cap. Your drain line gets hooked right up here and all you do is push this on and then they have a crimp down piece to make sure it does not come loose. So let's take this part off and hook this up. I'm glad they included a washer, but just know this is a wearable part. So over time it may leak, so just keep an eye on it. Both our drain line and water line are hooked up. I actually have the water on because this is a good time to test to see if there's a leak. It does not look like it's leaking. Let's turn this right back up and I'm gonna run it through one cycle. Let's go through the operations. Of course, we'll turn it on. And as you can see, everything lights up. It's a really nice screen. You can see from standard all the way down to fruit. And all we do is change the selection by clicking the button. And as you can see, the times actually change with each different selection, but also the temperature that's being used for the water also changes. More specifics about that, you actually have to check out the manual, but it's really neat, all the different options. I actually hooked up the drain tube to this five gallon bucket. I'm gonna put this on the floor just in case it's part gravity drain, but I actually wanna see how much water is used when we are washing the dishes. I'm gonna pick standard, which runs for 69 minutes. Let's hit play or go. Oh, I can hear that it's filling up with water. Funny thing, I find myself just sitting and watching the wash cycle instead of doing something else. I could have used this time just to wash the dishes. Other than taking a just a long time to wash and dry, it did a really good job. Ran through the water cycles and the drying cycles without issue. All right, so I'm gonna show you what the bucket looks like later in the video, but before that, what are your thoughts of this countertop dishwasher? Would you get one? Are you looking? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Now, let's continue on with this review. Now we're gonna put this dishwasher to the test. I've got two plates here that have ketchup, mustard, and syrup on it. So we're gonna put those right in there. We've got some forks and spoons. Of course, I've got cereal bowls that, of course, we had cereal on. I'm gonna put those right over here. Got some milk dripping down in here. There, that fit. We have a cup that had some wine in the bottom. I've got another cup that had some coffee at the bottom. We're gonna put that up here on the top rack. And then of course, a coffee cup that has, well, some cinnamon dried in on there. It's not a totally full load, but it's got a lot of dirty dishes to get clean. We're gonna put our soap right there where it goes. Hopefully it sticks in there. You might've noticed that I've actually taken the hose to supply the water completely off. That's because after reading the directions, I learned that you can put water in just right here on the top. It takes about 5.4 liters of water or just almost one and a half gallons. Cool thing is you do not have to actually be hooked up to a water source to run this washing machine. You should note that you filled this bucket that came with it or this pitcher that came with it three times to completely fill the reservoir. I really do like the convenience of having this fill here on the top. I just wish there was something that would stop it from spilling because I spilled all over the lid. Now that we are completely loaded with water, let's turn it on. You can see it's running for 69 minutes. We'll turn the dry on as well. It's on standard mode. Let's hit the play or start button. You can hear the water running. 
All right, so I wanted to show it to you with all the soap going in there. It definitely is sudsing up everything. I'm excited to see if it really does clean all the dishes. We're still in our cycle. I should say that each of the different cycles listed do something different. I'm on standard, so it's gonna be hot water followed by cold water, followed by cold water, followed by hot water again, and then it'll dry it out. You can see that we have 48 minutes left and we are using the water from the basin instead of water from the hose. I think that it's cool that it sort of just fills up the bottom part of the basin with water after it drains, and then it'll start using that same water to cycle throughout the wash. We've now entered the drying cycle. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna open this up just to see how the dishes look. Pretty impressive. The plates look really, really clean. All of the cinnamon is off of the mug. This cup looks clean. Man, let's check the silverware. Wow, everything is really, really clean. Full cycle ended and I am still impressed. These dishes are dry. I could put them right away if I wanted to. All right, so I did want to show you this part. You can actually unscrew this basket and if there's any food in there, you can throw that away or other debris. And this part also comes out to be cleaned. One thing I did notice is there's water down here still. I don't know why that didn't drain. There's also some food debris that evidently made it past the basket. There's a couple more things I wanted to point out. They recommend that you put the silverware basket right here and then the plates go next to it. However, when I initially put the plates in, I wanted to use both of these racks just so they hold into place. That being said, having the plates so far forward actually hit part of the roof and I had to scoot them this way. Also, I really do like this upper rack, except it should be noted it's not really meant for oversized mugs. Really just smaller, regular sized mugs should go there as they fit in and, well, the door can close. The bigger mugs don't fit up top. I did want to show you the water after we did a wash. You can see that it's kind of murky and well gross. Part of that's probably soap and then also it's cleaning up the dishes. This is about a gallon and a half. So it really used all of the reservoir that we had in there. I do appreciate that it gives you pretty easy error codes, so to speak. Right now I tried to run it and it tells me I have no water inside and it's not connect to a water source. So I know I need to fill it up with water in order to use it. In this video, we were taking a look at countertop dishwashers. So what did I think about? Well, first things first, the price point ranges between $250 to about $310 on Amazon, just depending on the features that you get. It was funny, I really looked through Amazon and a lot of them looked very, very similar but just with different names. I like the convenience of it. I like the portability of it. I even like that you could put water right into it and not have to have it directly line fed. That is really convenient. It did really do a great job cleaning the dishes. I was so impressed. In fact, it did better than my actual dishwasher. Of course, that one is pretty old. If I have to say a con, it would just be the internal size. Just doesn't hold a whole lot. But then again, this is a portable, countertop dishwasher. It's not meant to hold all of your dishes. Anyway, that was my full review of the countertop dishwasher. If this is something that interests you, I will leave a link down in the description. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for you. As always, thanks for stopping by and hope you have a great day. The write-up about this dishwasher says it has a Wi-Fi app integration. However, I was not able to get it to work. I tried for a few hours and just wasn't successful. You're supposed to be able to turn it on and off with the app. Like I said, I just couldn't do it. All those things aside, the washing part did great. I wasn't gonna use the app anyway. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of this portable countertop dishwasher. Not that long ago, I actually reviewed another product and it's a portable washing machine with spin dry. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link that right up here and I would love it if you would click on this link. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm gonna join you at this review. So go ahead, click it, it's safe, I promise.